my video is on bottle rockets. Don't just copy someone else's. Learn why you do things. If you follow the directions I give you, you're going to learn how to build an awesome rocket. If you don't listen, it won't be so awesome. Unfortunately, my computer is not working, so I don't have all the video that I recorded. So we have a few pictures instead. There's a lot of websites out there that will show you how to build a bottle rocket. It will say do this, do that. But to be honest, most of them aren't very good. I'm going to try to show you not what to do, but why you're going to do it. Why do you build it the way you build it? Einstein once said that imagination is more important than knowledge. That's true. But imagination isn't the only thing. If we had just imagination but no knowledge, we'd have cars with five wheels. They wouldn't go very well. We'd have cars with three wheels. When you try to turn a corner, they'd fall over. Imagination is great, but you have to start with some knowledge. The knowledge is the important part. If you have the knowledge, then you can add your imagination and have something really special. This is a nice diagram of a real basic bottle rocket. Yours doesn't need to be much fancier than this. However, the fins are way too large, and there's no mass at the top. There's two things that are important to building a quality, good bottle rocket. Fins for stability, and mass to make it go through the air. Without the mass, it doesn't go anywhere. Try throwing a balloon is filled with air, it doesn't go very far. If you attach a little mass to it, like put some water in it, you can throw it a lot further. The second problem is that without the fins, the rocket will tend to tumble, both on the way up and especially on the way down. The mass makes it go straight. That's what makes it go high. If the rocket goes side to side, it's going to end up wasting energy going side to side. You want to take all that energy and make it go straight up in the air. Therefore, you almost want your rocket to act boring. You don't want it to wobble. You want it to go straight. So you must add mass at the top and smaller fins at the bottom. Here's an example of a rocket that's not too bad. Notice they put four fins. Four can sometimes be better than three because it's easier to spread them out equally. If the fins are not equally spaced all the way around the rocket, the rock will tend to fall one direction or the other because of too much weight. The fins are also fairly low just before the rocket bends. Notice the nice cone on the top, which helps to cut through the air. We don't know if they put any mass under there because we can't see it. Here's an example of another rocket. This rocket has some things that are better and some things that maybe aren't so good. If you notice the blue top with stars, that was a second bottle. They cut the top off and just attached it to the first bottle. There's maybe some mass in there, we hope, perhaps some air. But the idea is to help cut through the air. Notice how nice and symmetrical that top is. Now the fins look like they're made out of cardboard a little thick, and they're awfully large. They really only need to be about half that big. But the bottom of the fin is pretty low on the rocket. That's a good thing. This diagram shows a, what a bottle rocket should look like. Notice the blue water. It's about half full. About 40 to 50 percent is the ideal weight. Above that is the compressed air, which the rocket launcher will put in. And the top is a nose cone. Th unfortunately, they don't show any mass under the nose cone. And the fins are a little bit long. They don't need to go to the bottom of the rocket, because that will get in the way of the launcher. And that is for another video. <laughs> the Leeds Corporation, Leeds Software, has given us some very good information. If you check out their website, they have many examples of water rockets, or what we call bottle rockets. First, on this example, 
the fins. They're rather large. For their launcher, that was probably okay. For our launcher, we need to have it smaller. Second, in the top right corner, it says they used a ball for nose mass. Probably a tennis ball. You wouldn't want a baseball hitting you in the head. How much mass should you put up there? About 75 grams, maybe up to 100. A small amount of clay or a small amount of dirt will work just as well. Along the left side, it says parameters to consider. There are four areas to look at when you build your rocket. The nose, body, fins, and stability. Notice for the first three areas, nose, body, and fins, the first word is smooth. Under all three, you don't want to mess up the aerodynamics of your rocket. If you take a look down to the third one, where it talks about the fins. The fins need to be lightweight, rigid. They need to be fairly thin and small. Finally, on the bottom it says stability. You want your rocket to be almost boring when it travels up into the air. If it's wobbling back and forth from side to side, you're wasting energy going to the sides. It's much better to spend that energy going straight up in the air for a very high launch. How do you do that? You make everything smooth and you put a very high center of mass. In other words, your weight goes in the top under the cone. You also try to put the fins as low as you can and as straight as you can. If the fins are not perfectly straight, your rocket won't go straight either. Einstein said, imagination is more important than knowledge. When it comes to bottle rockets, that's absolutely true. But it's got to start with the knowledge. You now know that the two most important things for your bottle rocket are mass in the top and straight small fins at the bottom. Beyond that, use your imagination and have fun.